morning, church. Good morning, Uh, lots of people came up to me this morning and asked what happened, and so I, I wanted to uh, say there was a rumor that was going around that I was in a car accident, and it's true. I was in a car accident on Friday, um, and my car was totaled. But as I was talking to Laura um, about it, what, what really was present to me is um, just all the things that we learned through our series on gratitude. There was so much grace present. Grace that I was alone and the babies were not with me. Grace that Stephen happened to be home on Friday morning and could come right down the street and meet me. Grace that there was a witness, because I really had no idea what happened. Um, Grace that the police officers were able to take care of everything. Grace that neither party were physically injured um, to any great extent. So um, indeed, I, I was living the lessons of our gratitude series of keeping our eyes open to the way grace is present, even in the midst of something as scary um, and as un, uh, unfavorable, shall we say, as a car accident. I also want to give thanks, um, given that, of the warm, warm, thoughtful uh, ways in which you, this congregation, responded. Um, as folks, different folks heard about it, I got text people offering me rides and um, all kinds of different things. So thank you. Um, and let us continue to drive carefully, shall we? <laughs> this morning I wanted to share that in the months and years, actually, before Milo and Imani were conceived, I began preparing. I think the very first thing that I did was give up coffee. And then eventually tea also. And I want you to know that those are both things that I love deeply. I started taking vitamins, right? Something that I actually don't, didn't do very often. Um, and I began to pay attention to everything that went into my body and onto my body, thanks to Stephen, of course. <laughs> I went to doctor's appointments, lots and lots of doctor's appointments. I got acupuncture, sometimes up to three times a week. Stephen and I worked on our house, if you might remember at that time, and while it took us a long, long while, we finally got our act together and got it finished, right? A home that we could imagine housing a family. And after years of prayer and considering the idea, I also finally worked up enough courage to take a break if you remember, I took three months off in order, actually, to really prepare. When we finally found out that we were pregnant, the preparation was taken to a whole new level. In thinking about all of that, I have a new appreciation, my friends, for the invitation to prepare the way. To prepare the way for Jesus, the Christ child, to be born. Now, clearly, any birth takes some work, right? And I would imagine that the birth of our Redeemer isn't an exception. Yet what I'm most aware of this Sunday as I sit with Mary is that all my preparations, all the work, began only after I decided to say yes to having children. For the time that Stephen and I mulled over the question between us, right, there was nothing particular that I or we did. What could there be to do when a choice had not yet been made, an intention not yet set? It was only when I decided, when we decided to be open and available to this huge life change that all the preparation got underway. In our scripture story today, a story that we most often read on the fourth Sunday in Advent, Mary is told that she is found favor with God and that's chosen to give birth to Jesus, the Son of the Most High, the Son of God. Now, even though Gabriel's words are more of an announcement, right, and less of a request or a proposal, the truth is that in that moment, Mary has a choice, because God always gives us a choice, true? To say yes or no, to be willing and available, or not. It's an incredible choice, of course, and one that only she has had to make in the history of the world. 
But isn't it true that we are all invited to be bearers of Christ, mothers of God? Meister Eckhart, a medieval mystic and theologian, made this point when he wrote, We are all meant to be mothers of God. Later writing, What good is it to me for the Creator to give birth to his Son if I do not also give birth to him in my time and my culture? On this second Sunday of Advent, as we consider, as we continue to consider what it means to prepare the way, the question I invite each of us to ponder is this Am I open and available? Am I open and available to God? Am I open and available for Christ to be born in me, to come into the world through me? Let's pray. Oh God, we are not so different from Al in asking, how can this be? And from Mary asking the same question. And yet, we exclaim along with Al's great enthusiasm, amazing. From the impossible, we have the possible. And for that, we give thanks to you, O oh God. As we gather this morning, we pray that your Holy Spirit will be present here, strongly moving through us, so that we might sense a choice, an invitation, a call into a great, impossible, possible possibility. This is our prayer, O oh God, and we pray it in the name of the one who came, so small, so weak, so vulnerable. Jesus has a baby. Amen. <clears throat> I think several of us um, gathered in this room attended that New Testament study recently that Pastor Moon led, and we give thanks to Pastor Moon again and invite your prayers for him as he recovers from the flu. Our story, you will remember if you went through that course, is that our story today in which Gabriel is dispatched to make another birth announcement only appears in the gospel according to Luke and nowhere else. We read that it's in the sixth month, right, the sixth month of Elizabeth's surprise pregnancy that our story takes place. Gabriel is dispatched to Nazareth this time where Mary lives. Now, it might be important for us to remember that Nazareth was a nowhere town, stuck way up north in the Galilee, far from the centers of power in Jerusalem or even Rome. In fact, we might remember Nathaniel saying to Philip at the beginning of the Gospel of John, can anything good come out of Nazareth? When he was urging him to come, come and see, for they had found the Messiah. Yet God found favor in a teenage girl from nowhere. Setting aside questions about her hometown, we aren't given any reason why God might have noticed Mary. We know nothing about her life before this, nor will we learn much about it afterwards. Luke does not tell us that she's particularly righteous like he did with Elizabeth and Zechariah, only that she is a virgin which many have argued, actually, that was really a term used not to describe her sexual purity, but rather her young age. Yet Gabriel 12 tells her twice that she is favored even before, even before, my friends, she says yes. Now, why might all of this be important for us to remember? Because it is a reminder, my friends, that the extraordinary movements of God don't just happen to amazing people with amazing resumes of holiness, right? Also, that the extraordinary movements of God do not only happen in the halls of power and the places of greatness. No, our story is an important reminder that God notices and favors the utter ordinary, the unassuming, the out-of-the-way places, the everyday, the nothing special kind of folks, perhaps, like me and like you. 
God notices and favors you, my friends. So just in case you were thinking that you had somehow been excluded, right, from being used by God to do amazing things, remember, there's nothing about you that makes you less worthy of God noticing, favoring, and choosing you to become partners, to become revealers of her love, her hope, and her presence in the world. You're not too old, right? Some of you might be thinking, I'm, I'm kind of old and over the hill, right? You're not too old because you have to remember Elizabeth and Zechariah, they were old, okay? You're not too young, right? For anybody thinking like, oh, I haven't started my life, I'm too young. No, because think about Mary. And you're not too ordinary, too unskilled, or ill-prepared. Because, friends, you just have to open the Bible and find any person, and you'll realize God uses them all. But you do have to say yes. You do have to choose, and you do have to be open and available. Now, here was the thing as I was singing with this whole passage. My guess is that most of the folks in this room are more planners than risk takers. Yes? Would you agree? More planners than risk takers. The way we make decisions, right, and we may choose is by gathering as much information as we can about all that will be involved. We like to think through, okay, the ramifications and the consequences of the decision. We want to make sure that we know all the ins and outs of all of our options before we say yes or no. But the truth is, saying yes to God is a little bit like saying yes to having kids. You really have no idea what you're saying yes to. My life is a case in point. Really, you're making yourself open and available to a possibility, to a relationship. That is all. Isn't that true for Mary? Gabriel gives her the briefest, most concise rundown of what's being asked of her, right? To conceive a holy baby and to call him Jesus. When she asks the question, but how can this be? Gabriel adds only a few more details, right? Ah, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. I often wonder what these things, what tone they're set in, right? <laughs> we, should, we should go through many versions <laughs> to figure them out. There's no way Mary could have known in that moment what that really meant, what she was saying yes to. And yet we find that she so boldly and courageously and maybe naively affirms. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Now, I say all of this as a word of caution <laughs> and reality. Being open and available to God is hugely risky, my friends. It will take your life in directions you had no idea were possible or even welcomed. You will not get to live the orderly, safe, well-planned life that you might think you want or that is billed as a successful life or the one that you think you'll enjoy. You'll likely not get to have all the nice things that we're taught make for a happy and successful life. But you will get to birth, give birth to the holy. You will get to experience a love wider, higher, and deeper. And you will get to be a part of transforming the world for the good. Barbara Brown Taylor, one of my favorite Christian writers, describes saying yes like this. You can decide to say yes. You can decide to be a daredevil, a test pilot, a gambler. You can set your book down and listen to a strange creature, strange ideas. You can decide to take part in the plan you did not choose, doing things you do not know how to do for reasons you do not entirely understand. You can decide to take part in a thrilling and dangerous scheme with no script and no guarantees. You can agree to smuggle God into the world inside your own body. Isn't that a great line? I love that last line, to smuggle God into the world 
inside our own bodies. So what do you say, friends? This Advent, will you say yes once again? Will you prepare the way by making yourself open and available to God? Will you continue to wait to be surprised by the angels that are dispatched to you in your life, in your little corner of the world? Angels that tell you just how you have been noticed and blessed to be a part of God's redemption of the world. I hope so. For the world so needs you. A world riddled by gun violence and mass shootings and a great lack of moral courage to do anything about it. A world mired in hunger and the belief that there's simply not enough when there truthfully is an abundance. A world that is more ready to punish and discriminate than welcome. A world that often can't seem to muster compassion or kindness for the last or the least. A world more ready to bomb, to lie, to harm than to negotiate, to self-examine, to confess, to heal. A world that has forgotten what makes for justice. This world needs the light, the love, the hope, the mercy, the joy, the peace, the beauty, actually, that only you can give birth to. This world so needs to see through you that indeed nothing is impossible with God. This world so needs to have you smuggle God in once again. Amen.